Hello there, this is A.D. Robles, and you're listening to A.D. on the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Whew, had a pause there. I drank some coffee just now, and it was, it was too hot, and then I swallowed it too fast, and whew, burning the inside of my esophagus. Anyway, before we get started today, if you have not considered doing so already, please consider becoming a Fight, Laugh, Feast Network club member using the show code ROBLES. That is R-O-B-L-E-S. Use the show code ROBLES. That is R-O-B-L-E-S to let the boys over at the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network know that you appreciate this content in particular. We've got a lot of great stuff planned for 2021. If you haven't been following us, We're doing a rally in South Dakota. We're doing the conference in Tennessee. We're doing a bunch of different stuff. And hopefully, we'll continue to be able to produce this content and get it to you, regardless of what big tech and their overlords tell them to do and all of that kind of stuff. So please consider supporting us in that mission. We're getting you the content that is unapproved, unauthorized. The state has no bearing over the kinds of things that we say on this network because... Christ is King. Use the show code ROBLES, that is R-O-B-L-E-S, to support this content on the Fight, Laugh, Feast network. Now, wanted to bring to you a article that I read from the owner, the, the CEO of Gab. I'm a big fan of Gab. I have quit uh, Facebook. I've quit Twitter. I'm never going back, guys. It's never going to happen. I deleted it. There's a lot of stuff there. There's a lot of content there that I just deleted. I was on the phone last night with my uh, with my publisher. By the way, that book is going really well. It's it's a little slower than I thought it would be the process, but we want to make sure we put out the best product possible, and so that's going. But they asked me. They said, "What what what? what do you have Twitter? What's your Twitter account? What's your Facebook account? Let's talk about marketing." And I was like, "I don't I don't do that stuff anymore. That's not me. I'm on Gab." Anyway, so. Um, and they were like, what do you mean, that white supremacist <laughs> organization? I was like, no, no, Gab's not like that. I'm a big fan of Gab, and, I, and I, um, I'm happy to see people joining. And this guy, Andrew Torba, the CEO of Gab, um, the, the guy seems to have a good head on his shoulders, man. I, this guy needs some prayer because he's getting put through the ringer, and uh, I want to support the guy, you know what I mean? He seems like a strong guy to me. Now, I don't know him personally. I, maybe one day I'll get to know him, but I don't know him right now. Um, but man, he, the way he tweets, the way things he shares, the, the the mindset that he has about everything that happens, um, it just it's very very um, encouraging. Is really what it is. It, it it gets me out of bed. It gets me wanting to promote Gab. It really does. I I bought a pro membership and I was happy to do it. I was happy to give uh, Gab my money for what they're trying to accomplish. And so anyway, I I just thought I'd read this article because it just it's so it's so interesting and I think it's something we all need to consider going into the future because um, we have a situation uh, uh, that we're facing right now. We have a situation where it has become so apparent that many of the companies that we do business with that I'll, I'll speak for myself, many of the companies that I do business with, hate my guts and would prefer it if I was locked in uh, a prison because I'm a Christian nationalist, evil fundamentalist, blah, 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 blah. They hate me. And yet they hate me and I'm handing over my cash to them. And that's a problem. Like that's something we probably shouldn't do because the Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous, not the other way around. And so many of us live our lives in such a way that our wealth is actually going to the wicked so that they could do whatever it is that they do. And some, it's not, not, now, not every company is made equal, right? Be, you know, there, there could be a non-Christian company that's not engaged in wickedness. But many of the companies that we, we deal with and that we, we, we use are engaged in literal wickedness all the time. And so we're living a, a life as, as if the wealth of the righteous is laid up for the wicked, but God says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. And so there's a disconnect there with many of the people that are on my side of this issue. But I want to talk about a principle that um, that is very important because I want to read this article, and, and Andrew Torba has got some really good points in here. But the principle that I want to just sort of put out there today is that 
we should try to do what Andrew Torba is suggesting here, but we can't hold ourselves to this purity standard that is unreasonable, right? Like we just have to do the best that we can. And I know that sounds kind of lame, but it's the truth. We have to do the best that we can. Like sometimes you have two horrible options, right? But you still sometimes have to choose between two horrible options. Let me give you an example. Let's say you had two investments that you could make with your, with your money. You could either do nothing with your money or you could invest it. And the doing nothing with your money, you would actually lose a lot of money due to inflation. So your investment would be negative, right? You put, you know, you stuff your money under your mattress. That's a bad investment. Let's say you lose 10% a year. Let's just say, right? Or you could invest your money into something, a business, a stock, you know, uh, gold, whatever it is. It's just, this is a hypothetical, right? You could stuff it under the mattress, lose 10% a year, or your other option is you found an investment where you lose 5% a year. Now, in my hypothetical example, those are the only two options. You have to pick one. Would anybody in their right mind say it would be good to buy an investment that you lose 5% a year on? No, that's not good. But if you only have two options, a wise Christian would do the best that they can. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we don't have, in my hypothetical example, an option where you actually get a return on your money. You gain money. All we have is a less bad investment choice. And a smart person would not be, well, I got to be pure. I only, I can only make a profit. I don't, because by not acting, you're actually losing more money. And so you got to do the best you can. And so I want to read this article from Andrew Torba. I agree with so much of this article, but I want to make sure to just encourage you that um, don't wait for perfection, right? Let me, let me, you'll, you'll understand what I mean when I read it. So this is Andrew Torba. I love this article. He says this, over the course of the past week, Gab has been deplatformed by one of our banks. My goodness. Let me step out of the article for a second. Guys, they're coming for you. He can't even bank with these guys anymore because why? Because, well, he's not Facebook. He's not approved. He, uh, people said some mean things about him. We don't know if it's true or not, but whatever. I mean, we can't, we can't accept your money anymore. Guys, they're coming for you. They're coming for you. Your wrong think is next. Right now, it's Andrew Torba's wrong think. Your wrong think is next. So anyway, let's go back to the article. It had been deplatformed by one of our banks, a business we were working with to source our new server hardware, third-party infrastructure analysis software, and even our accountant. This isn't anything new for us. We've been deplatformed by 25-plus service providers, including both app stores, PayPal, dozens of payment processors, hosting providers, email services, and more. Listen to this, guys. I want you to take this. This guy has been screwed left and right, right? This guy has been screwed by companies left and right. I want you to hear the next sentence and compare this to that moron Jamar Tisby. Ready? When this happens, I rejoice and praise God because I know that he is working to separate the wheat from the chaff. Let me step out of the article again. Amen, Andrew Torba. Amen. There's no victim here. Andrew Torba could be like, oh, no, another bank screwed me over. Like, like, oh, I'm a victim. Somebody get me some reparations. Somebody, somebody get me some, some, some uh, stimulus. I need some stimulus package. Instead, he says, no, no victim mindset here. I rejoice and I praise God because I know that he's separating to work the wheat, working to separate the wheat from the chaff. He goes on. This deplatforming inevitably reforms Gab into an even more resilient community business and platform. We don't just sit around and whine when these things happen. We immediately get to work. We aren't victims. We're builders. Amen, Andrew Torba. That's what I'm talking about, man. See, that's the thing. Like Andrew Torba has realized that you can, you can pivot from being canceled into being stronger than you were before they tried to cancel you. It's just like Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know, you strike me down, I will become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. Every time I turn on this microphone, I consider the fact that this could be the time that I get canceled, right? This could be the time when they come for me. But I get to, what I but what I start to think is if it happened that way, then I would have achieved a certain he calls it resilience. I call it a notoriety that would help me in the long run. It might be short-term pretty painful. 
but in the long run, I would return and be more powerful than they could possibly imagine. They haven't come for me yet, but eventually they will. And I, I'm, I'm with Andrew Torba. I think it makes us stronger, but let's just continue here. He says, personally, I don't believe the common Christian mantra to, quote, be in the world but not of the world means giving the enemy our money, time, and data. This has got to stop right now. He says, I am in the process of transitioning every part of my financial expenses to support Christian businesses, Christian media companies, Christian content creators, and Christian people. I am done giving my money to the enemy and funding the destruction of our country and values. I encourage everyone to do the same. If they, I think he's talking about the business here, if they are not serving God, they are serving Satan, and I am simply not going to fund that activity. I mean, this guy's got his head on his shoulders. Uh, uh, his head on his shoulders? Yes, well, everyone's head's on their shoulders, but he's got a good head on his shoulders. What he's thinking is, okay, so they're using my money to do their evil activity, so I stop giving them my money. I mean, it seems logical, it seems reasonable, right? I mean, that, this is the essence of no despair. Last year, I did no despair 2020, right? Like, you can only control what you do, right? Like, if the enemy, if these companies, big tech, they're going to exist anyway. A lot of people say, well, they're going to exist anyway. Your, your, your data is a drop in the bucket. And I'm like, fine. Let them destroy themselves. Let them have their fun. Let, let, let Babylon burn if they're intent on burning themselves. I'm not participating in it. I can control what I do. I can't control what Zuckerberg does. You know what I mean? If Zuckerberg wants to, you know, whatever he wants to do, I've, I've heard some things, but I don't know. If he wants to do whatever he wants, to, I can't control, but I can control what I do. I'm not going to give him another product to sell uh, on uh, in his little weirdo flesh market anymore. I'm not going to be a part of it. I deleted my stuff. I'm not going to participate in that. So, the, so, it's, so it's, 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 this, is, this, is, this is the essence of what I was talking about with No Despair 2020. I can't fix the big institutions and machinations and stuff like that. But what I can do is control where my dollars go. And so here's Andrew's suggestion. Here's what he says. He says, deeply examine the businesses, the brands, the media companies that you currently support both financially and with your time. If they are a virtue signaling, critical theory, nonsense, or owned by demons... If they are virtue signaling critical theory nonsense or owned by demons, you should immediately stop paying them and using their services. Very reasonable. Very reasonable. And, and here's where I want to bring in my principle, right? You do the best you can. You do the best you can. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I was talking to my brother, and we were on Signal, right? And we were talking, we we're like, well, Signal, yeah, I like Signal. Signal's cool. Yeah, Signal's cool. It's, it's like Messenger, except it's better, and supposedly it's encrypted. My brother said, well, we don't know if it's, if it's encrypted. It seems like it's encrypted, but but I don't know. It just seems like it's promoted by too many, too many you know, big guys. You know what I mean? Elon Musk is promoting it, so-and-so. This and that is promoting it. And I've heard some stories that Signal might not be as safe as you think it is. And so we were talking about that and the p possibility that something like Signal, this is allegedly, I, I, I like Signal. I'm not saying anything bad about Signal, but there ha I've heard some stories that maybe it's not quite as safe as you think it is, right? Maybe it's not quite as encrypted as you think it is, not quite as, as good as you think it is. And okay, okay fine. I don't know any about, anything about that stuff, right? I don't know about that stuff. But you do the best you can. You do the best you can. So let's just say that there was something wrong with Signal, right? I, I have no idea. I don't know if that's true or not. I just, I've heard it, whatever. So you've got two choices, right? You do the best you can. This is my principle. You've got two choices. You've got a company, Facebook Messenger, that you know are demons. And then you've got Signal, which you've heard some rumblings, but you're not quite sure that they're demons. <laughs> okay. So you need a messenger because you need to communicate, you need to coordinate. The messenger is very effective for that. You can make money, you know, communicating this and that. You do the best you can. You're not omniscient. You, you don't know that everybody is on the right team, whatever. You do know that Facebook is horrible. You like Signal. It replaces Facebook in many ways. The messenger, go ahead and use Signal. Don't be paralyzed into inaction. You know Facebook hates you. We're not so sure about Signal. Go ahead and go use Signal. Or you can find another option. But I'm saying if you only had those two options, you do the best you can. That's all you can do. You do the best you can. And so, so 
I think Andrew's point here is is a good one. It's like examine the companies that you know are evil and stop doing business with them. And he's not saying that you have to be perfect here. I, I think that we need to understand that you don't have to find the perfect Christian reconstructionist company. You know what I mean? It just so happens that Gab is like, you know, is awesome. But even Gab, like, I don't know Andrew Torba. Maybe one day I'll get to know. I don't know him. So could Andrew Torba be a, a, a black hat secretly waiting to stab us in the back or something? I suppose. I don't know him. But, 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 but the thing is. I make my best guess. I'm doing the best I can. I know Facebook hates me. I know Zuckerberg is a lizard person. Andrew Torba seems to be saying the right things. I'm doing the best I can. That, that's all I can do. I'm not omniscient. I leave the results up to God. I say, God, here's why I'm giving Andrew Torba money instead of allowing myself to be sold by Mark Zuckerberg. Here's why I'm doing, uh, I'm doing that. I'm supporting Gab because I, this is the reasons why I'm doing it. And I'm doing the best I can. That's what I'm doing. And, and I think that's a, a principle that comes straight from the Bible. We'll talk about that in a moment. But let's go back to Torba's article. At this point, he says, we have no choice but to build our own everything. Let's stop there. What he's talking about is we need Christian banks. We need Christian media. We need Christian IT infrastructure. We need Christian uh, cable companies. Well, not really cable companies, but you understand what I mean, internet companies. We need uh, Christian service providers. We need Christian everything because the reality is that anything that's not Christian is going to come for you as a Christian eventually. Before you know it, you're going to be having to, having to sign the LGBT pledge to get electricity in your house. You know what I mean? People like what people always say to me, well, what are you, what are you crazy? That's not going to happen. Okay, go ahead and live in your fantasy world. Jimmy Crackcorn and I don't care. I'm not going to attempt to convince you. If you don't see the writing on the wall at this point, I'm not even going to waste one moment attempting to convince you. The fact that Gab is having a difficult time finding a bank, the fact that Gab can't find a payment processor or has had trouble with that in the past, um, if that doesn't convince you that, that there's a problem, a fundamental problem with this critical theory, virtue signaling nonsense that happens, then I, nothing can convince you. I'm not going to waste time trying to convince you that the sky is blue. That's ridiculous, right? So we need Christian everything. And this is where, again, my principle comes into play, right? You do the best you can because do you have a bank that you know has got your back kind of thing and, and stuff like that? Well, maybe we don't. Maybe we have to start one, right? And we don't have it yet. But in the meantime, you still do need to purchase financial products, right? So if you get a mortgage, if you're, if you're trying to you know, buy a house or something, or you're trying to um, you know, buy an investment property or something like that, and you can't find a, a Christian bank with Christian principles that'll, that'll loan you money, or you just can't even find one altogether, go ahead and buy that investment property with a regular bank because you just got to do the best you can. And for, in the meantime, while we're trying to build, we do need to engage in certain services. Financial services are one of them, right? So you do the best you can, right? And so we need uh, people that are capable of starting a bank, for example, that are on our team to go ahead and do that, and I'll support that. Right, I'll even pay a few extra uh, 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 interest points to, to support something like that. Right, it might be a little bit more expensive. I'll support that though. Gab is a hundred percent more expensive than Facebook because Facebook is buying and selling you like you're in a meat market. Right, so but I'll support that. I'll give Gab some money for a product that I believe in. Right, for for a product and a mission that I believe in. So, um, yeah, I mean, you do the best you can. We need to build our own everything. But you have to take it little by little. You have to focus on certain things, and you have to take. You have to put one front foot in front of the other. You can't just instantly snap your fingers and now we have Christian everything. We got to take it one step at a time. So in the meantime, you do the best you can. You see what I'm saying? Like, like don't be paralyzed into inaction because we don't have a perfect solution, right? Like, don't not leave Facebook because Gab doesn't load perfectly every time. You do the best you can. You see what I'm saying? You do the best you can. Once you realize that demons are buying and selling your information um, f just for, for the fun of it, don't participate in that anymore. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Gab might not be totally perfect yet, but you do the best you can. So here we go. He says, that starts by supporting those who are already building and share our values. It's not simply about building our own social networking platforms anymore. It's about building our own Christian economy. Amen. 
our own Christian economy, one without cancel culture, one that doesn't embrace the demonic and degenerate cult religion of critical theory. Uh, again, amen. Good stuff here. We need our own Christian everything, and we got to start with certain things, and we, and we go from there. We have to build. This is the time to build, right? We need Christian landlords out there, Christian landlords that aren't going to cancel you because um, you didn't put the black flag outside your house or the rainbow flag outside your house um, to support Black Lives Matter and LGBT. Like, we, 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 we need that kind of stuff. We need Christian landlords. He goes on, critical theory is a fraudulent, vapid, and pathetic subversion of well-meaning Christian churches and Christian values in general. It lures decent, God-fearing people into practicing a false and demonic pseudo-religion designed to accelerate their spiritual and literal demise. It preys on the malleable minds of our youth, it enslaves those who practice it, and it seeks to destroy those who do not. So my whole YouTube channel is about. Amen, Andrew Torba. You're 100% right. He goes on. It is a demonic imitation gospel, and most certainly not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It must be mocked, shunned, and rebuked by all Christians. Now is the time. Now is not the time, rather, to sleep th rock through history on this subject. We must know the enemy's fake gospel better than they know it themselves, so we can lead others away from it and towards the gospel of Jesus Christ. Again, that's what my whole YouTube channel is about. If you haven't watched my content, I've got like 700 videos on this exact topic. I've got an upcoming book coming out on this exact topic and all of that kind of stuff. He goes on. He says, talk to your kids about these things. Homeschool them if at all possible. Cut the cord. Delete the big tech apps from the phones, from their phones and your own. We have a lot of work to do. But remember that we have the creator of the universe on our side and through him all things are possible. Amen. You do the best you can. You cannot let the perfect, the, the lack of a perfect alternative in the present per, stop you from action right now. Cut the cable cord. Delete the big tech apps. Stop feeding your brain with propaganda. You can do that right now. Just shut it off. Just shut it off. Uh, guys, I didn't think this was possible because I didn't think that you know, it, it, social media really affected me that much. But I have to say, since I got rid of Facebook and Twitter, I've been more pleasant. I've been more pleasant. I feel like I, I'm thinking clearer. I'm fo more focused than I used to be. We don't need the propaganda because it's, it's very tiring. Even though they, you know they're lying to you, it's very tiring to always have to interpret or reinterpret their lies and reinterpret their worldview and deconstruct it and then put it back together the right way. Like We don't need all that stuff. We don't need it. They hate you. They're trying to confuse you. So stop consenting to it. He goes on. Let's, uh, he's almost done here. Almost done. This is a great article. He says, I was thinking about some of these things with a friend this morning, and she used the term, a, a term that made a lot of sense to me, the silent secession. At this moment, the secession is largely digital and economic, not geographical, but perhaps that will change at some point in the future. I, for one, am in full support of Jesus land. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too, although I live in the red section up here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not planning on moving, guys. I really am not. I'm staying right up here, right up here in pagan land, because I think Christ owns this too. You see what I'm saying? Right up here in New Hampshire, Christ owns New Hampshire. And so I've got some plans about what I'm going to do in my little town of Keene, New Hampshire. By the way, if you ever want to send me a letter, I've got a P.O. box at the Keene Post Office. Keene, New Hampshire, send me a letter. I've got plans up here because Christ owns this too. This is all Jesus land, son. You know what I mean? But listen, I, I can understand what he's saying here. This makes sense. This makes sense. America is a Christian nation. What a Christian nationalist. Can you believe it? They were all right. CNN was right. Andrew Torber's a Christian nationalist. <laughs> can you imagine? He actually says Jesus is king and thinks that that king actually has commands and edicts for his people. Could, could, what a fundamentalist. <laughs> <laughs> America is a Christian nation. The foundation of Western civilization itself is built on Christianity and more specifically on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. The second that changed is the second the destruction began. Our Christian kindness and tolerance have fueled our own destruction and have been weaponized against us. Tolerance is not a Christian virtue. We are commanded to hate that which is evil, not to fund it and give, it our, give our time to it. 
We have naively believed that pagans and others would not cut us down the moment they got into power as we are seeing unfold before our eyes over the past few decades. Lesson learned. A tough one to learn, but one that has been learned many times throughout history. It's time to start adhering to this biblical standard. What biblical standard? Well, he quotes it for, directly from the scripture. Andrew Torba, CEO of Gab.com, says, This is what we need to start adhering to. Do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why is it that the CEO of a social media company, a software guy, speaks clearer than your favorite big evil leader? Andrew Torba, a software guy has clearer, more correct words than 90% of Big Eva regarding what's going on in the culture right now. How did that happen? How did that happen? Did Andrew Torbra go to seminary secretly? We don't know about it. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think this guy probably has a stronger command of Python than he does, uh, you know, the, the latest... Uh, the latest Big Eva, you know, tome about the doctrine of limited atonement. I, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not criticizing that stuff, right? But how is it that people that can read the scriptures and study them for their whole lives can't figure out what's happening right in front of them better than the CEO of a software company? I, I, I can only say that this is the judgment of God. God has judged us, and we've been found wanting and so this silent Christian secession is going to be necessary, and it's going to be painful in the short term. But we have to love Christ more than we love our things. And so if you know that there are demons leading the companies that you're giving money to, stop giving them money. But you do the best you can. You do the best you can. Because there, it's going to be hard to kind of unwind and unplug from all of these companies that hate your guts, that have bought wholesale the new civic religion instead of Christianity. And they will try to cancel any true Christian. Any true Christian is now going to be a Christian nationalist, white supremacist bigot, right? And they're going to try to cancel you and make it so you can't pay, you can't buy or sell. I mean, where have we heard these things before? You can't po process a payment if you've got wrong think. And so we're going to have to learn how to maybe have less stuff, you know, less easy access to stuff. We got to have local connections where we can get what we need to, to get by and to survive. But even as we're doing that, we know that we have to build. We have to take ground. We have to um, establish ourselves, right? Because we have to live in light of the reality. The reality that God says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. So we need to start taking some of that stuff. We need to start plundering Egypt, right? Plundering Egypt. In the midst of their attempt at persecuting us, we need to take from them. We need to take from them little bits of land at a time. Little bits of land, little bits of ground, little bits of stuff. I, I'm, I've got plans in Keene, New Hampshire. And I'm trying to take ground from the pagans. Literal ground, land, dirt. I'm trying to take as much of it as possible from the pagans before I go because I want Keene, Keene, New Hampshire, a small little liberal town in New Hampshire. I want Keene to bow the knee to Christ even if the rest of New Hampshire does it, doesn't. I want the state of New Hampshire to bow the knee to Christ even if the rest of New England doesn't. You see, like, I, I, I'm trying to work things out on a small scale to live in light of the fact that God says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous, not the other way around. And so step one, it's like getting out of debt, sort of. It's like getting out of debt. Everyone wants to be wealthy. Everyone, everyone wants to have an inheritance or righteous people want to leave an inheritance to their children. Well, before you can start investing and start leaving an uh, 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 inheritance to your children, you got to get out of debt, right? So step one is you stop spending money you don't have, right? If you want to get out of debt, st cut up the c credit card. You know, stop spending, right? You got to stop going backwards first before you can start going forwards, right? And so here in Keene, right, if, if we're losing to the pagans, you know, in, in, in a variety of different ways, we're losing ground, we're losing wealth, we're losing all, then the first step is to unplug from it, to stop feeding into it. 
and then you can start taking ground, right? Before I can start taking ground in King, New Hampshire, I have to stop giving my money to the pagans. And so that's going to take work. That's going to take work, and it's going to be painful in the short term. But I think Andrew Torba is onto something here. But one thing I do want to add to this, though, guys, is don't let a lack of a perfect solution stop you from making choices today. Okay, Gab is a perfect example. You don't need social media, but but let's just say you did, right? You don't need a perfect Facebook replacement in order to stop allowing yourself to be bought and sold by Mark Zuckerberg. You don't need to do it. All you need to do to gain some ground in the short term is to stop paying for people to try to destroy you. Step one, cut up the credit card. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then you can start taking ground. And that's what I think we all need to be planning and plotting in our own little context, in our own little families at first. How do I gain ground in my immediate context and then my church and then my community and then my you know, city, then my state and all of that stuff? Like It's step by step, guys. It's step by step. You do the best you can. And in the, in the short term, a lot of us, for the, a lot of us, the best we can is to start unplugging from some of these evil corporations that are trying to sh- destroy you. They're trying to unperson you. They're trying to make it so that your name couldn't even be spoken amongst uh, respectable people. Don't feed into it anymore. Andrew Torba, God bless you. Let me know if you need any support, brother. I hope I hope to see you on Cross Politics soon because that'll be a good conversation. I hope you found this podcast helpful. God bless. <laughs> Don't forget to tune in next week on Thursday for AD on the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network.